This video will show you how I made these sustainer cabinets. And if you're interested, I do have plans, cut lists, and even the SketchUp file available for purchase on my website. And you can find the link in the video description below. I start the project by first ripping down all of my plywood that I will need for the four cabinets that I am making. The material that I used for these cabinets is 18 millimeter, or for the weird people, three quarter of an inch thick, Baltic birch. These sheets are five by five, which is perfect for the new table saw, as I do have a 79 inch throw on the slider. And this is actually the very first project that I really got to use the slider fully. Let me tell you, I can totally see the value in a sliding table saw now, but more on that in the future. Once everything has been ripped down, I went ahead and moved on to cross-cutting all of the individual pieces and set them aside. And this is where I was really impressed with this new table saw. The next step is to pre-bore all of the holes that will be used to mount the sustainer trays. Now, the measurements and the plans that I made for this are assuming that you are using the sustainer trays from Festool. If you were using something different, then the hole locations would be different based on the selected hardware. Now, to do this, I use the LR32 system. Now, my assumption is, if you're planning on making some of these for yourself, that you are familiar with the LR32 system, or at least the importance of it, in this scenario. But in case you aren't, the purpose of this system is to lay out a perfectly straight row of holes spaced out exactly 32 millimeter increments. These are not only useful for this application that I am about to show you, but for something like shelf pin holes or even hinges as well. Now, like I said, I am using the Festool Sustainer pullout trays for these cabinets, and each one comes with the slide pre-assembled and the holes that I am plunging are for those slides. Now I am only boring two holes as three I just really don't think are needed and is probably overkill. Which looking back now it is probably something that would have really been good for me to do after I bored the first hole in the second row. Oh well in this case it worked out just fine. So once all of those holes are bored, I did want to do a quick check to make sure that all of my holes line up before moving on to the other pieces. After the slide locations were bored out, I went ahead and cut down each one of my nailers or stretchers. Next, I moved on to the joinery. Now, I decided that I did not want any visible fasteners for these cabinets. I also didn't want to fuss around with clamping anything up. I just wanted to build them, assemble them, and install them. Perfect application for the Tenso connectors. Another option here would have been domino connectors, but this was much faster. In total, I used 12 Tenso connectors for each cabinet four on each top and bottom, and then two for the nailers. Prior to starting the assembly process, I sanded everything down with 150 just to get rid of the raised grain. Now, why do I have raised grain on this plywood? Well, that's because it started raining three minutes before I pulled into my driveway to download it. I should also mention it's a lot easier to sand everything before assembly as opposed to after. Moving on. Next, I applied all of my connectors, which honestly did not go as smoothly as I would have liked. It actually turns out it's very easy to get carried away with the lamello and not fully plunge it into the material. And that is pretty important seeing as how the connectors fit into a slot. No worries though, I just had to go back and replunge a few. Now I wanted this to be a very quick project 
So once all my connectors were in place, I added a little bit of tight bond, quick and thick. And funny story about that, that was actually Mike Coffey's nickname in high school. Next is the most satisfying part of using the Tenso connectors. And I'll just be quiet and let you listen. The snapping together sound is pure bliss. Now here I did add screws because I didn't place any connectors on the top side of each one of these nailers. Now the reason I'm using screws in this scenario is because it's on the top and bottom and it's not going to be visible. Now I did take this opportunity to get the first pull-out tray installed since I knew that there obviously needed to be one at the bottom to start. And everything from there would be based off of that sustainer that I am storing on that first tray. Now this next part is to appease all of the people that told me how much time I wasted in my video building a toe kick when I could just use leg levelers. Well, here you go. I am only using two on the front and this will make sense in just a minute. All I need is a quick measurement to establish how high my ledger board needs to be. Now, speaking of a ledger board, I took a couple of scrap pieces from the project and using a laser to ensure level, I nail the boards to the wall and then go back and drive a couple of screws into the studs. This is what the backs of the cabinets will rest on. Now back to the legs. By placing the backs of the cabinets on the ledger board, all I have to do is very quickly and easily adjust the cabinet to be plumb and square. After I know my first cabinet is good, I can build off of that for everything else. As I install the cabinets, I attach them not only to the wall, but to each other to bring all the seams tightly together. Now the last thing to do is to play the stacking game to figure out exactly which sustainers will go where. And this goes back to why using the LR32 system is so beneficial because it has so much adjustability. And from there, you just install tray after tray until you are done. This was the end result. Thanks for watching.